So hello everybody. I hope you can hear me well. Um, so welcome to this A Ediciones uh, community meetup. Uh, for today, we chose um, to have a look at uh, one edition we have been working on recently. It's a remake um, of the Alfred Escher edition. Um, in the title, I deliberately chose the term remastering uh, for, for this talk to express um, that the Azure edition is an older project and we have not been involved in its creation or, or design. So I see there are other people in this room who actually might know the history much, much better than I do. Um, so please excuse if some aspects I cannot comment on and others may need to step in. But yeah, it's like in, in music, uh, we remastered the application from its original sources, um, though the analogy is a bit weak, as we obviously also had to replay the details of the song rather than just rearranging, re rearranging it. Um, well, so you made us rather call it uh, a remake or a cover version. Um, No. So <clears throat> to give you a bit of background, as far as I know it, um, I think the edition project already started back in 2011 um, under the lead of uh, Professor Josef Jung um, and uh, funded by the Alfred Escher Foundation. Um, 2015, I think, uh, the first dig digital edition went, went online. And uh, I believe the uh, trans transcriptions and so on were, were completed by 2017. So in, since then, um, the edition has, has been uh, further maintained by the uh, Staatsarchiv in, in Zurich, um, which approached us uh, asking uh, yeah, about options for, for long-term term hosting, because uh, the plan was to uh, yeah not take this um, valuable edition down, but uh, keep it running for, for an, another decade or longer. Um, so we had a look at, at the code and uh, at uh, what has been reported as <clears throat> running costs to it. And as a result, um, <clears throat> decided uh, to uh, propose a fresh implementation um, based on, on TI and uh, TI Publisher. Um, I mean, it's normal that uh, a software project um, after a decade or so um, is in need for, for a bit of a remake and work over. Um, so this does not uh, it does not mean any anything negative about the original uh, design of the of the application. It's just a matter of fact that in software uh, things uh, do age, and uh, after a while you 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 need to to redo things maybe. Um, so the goals of this remake was uh, to convert the data to TIP5. So previously it was in uh, something like uh, TI, but not quite TI. Um, so we did a lot of conversion, also including people, places, keywords, and so on, all the auxiliary um, pages. Um, since this was an existing website which was running and uh, had its audience, uh, the, the goal also was to preserve the original functionality and organization of the site as, as much as possible. So uh, bookmark links and so on would still continue to work. Um, <clears throat> and users would, would find the pages they had been looking for before uh, so this was a, a major goal to, to achieve, to not change um, the basic organization of the site and how things are, are presented. But at the same time, 
we had to reduce uh, long-term maintenance and hosting costs um, because um, yeah, this was not a not a university project. Uh, so um, yeah, we actually had the numbers, and it was clear what what it costs just to keep it running. And uh, well, I'm if I'm not wrong, I think I can say that. Um, yeah, the additional costs of, of redoing the site would um, amortize after three or four years uh, just through the reduction of, of uh, hosting costs involved. So, um, yeah, so the new implementation, which was, was done from, from scratch. So basically, we just inherited um, one large backup of of the old uh, of the old website and the various servers it was running on um, we inherited this this data dump and then basically uh, looked at it and at the data and try to to redo what what was there without uh, losing uh, major functionality as 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 good as we could um, so the new site is actually based on TI Publisher 8, which has not been released yet, but uh, we will see that a part of TI Publisher 8, so a part of the features which go into Publisher 8 uh, were also developed in the course of, of this project. Um, all the XSLT transformations which were there have now been replaced by uh, by ODD, so TI processing model transformations. Um, we are using a default TI publisher generated up app structure, which really simplifies um, later later updates as all the changes have been limited to to defined extension points. Um, so it's it will be rather easy to just update to another. Um, TI publisher version with, with some improvements, maybe. Um, we have a clean API based on open API as every TI publisher generated app. And last but not least, um, the new app has a rather low footprint, I think compared to the old version. Um, so it runs on a, on a single server and even shares it with, with other editions running there at the same time. So <clears throat> the hardware uh, and resource requirements are rather low. Um, I can say that the entire source code uh, is, is, is public. So if you're really interested, uh, you could even just clone the repository, um, build a XR and install it on your own local instance to, to play around with, or even to use it as a starting point um, for your for your own work, um, <clears throat> so I'm I'm really happy about the uh, Staatsarchiv uh, Zurich um, open sourcing uh, the code because I think it will be a tremendous source for for other projects to look at things how things were done and to copy and paste this or that. Um, so we will see it. Uh, a bit more about <clears throat> potential features you may, might be interested in in a minute. Um, yeah, so it's always interesting to look at uh, the, the, the effort which was involved in, in doing this remake or remastering of the original version. So what we have now, that's just a quick count, is like 600 lines of ODD processing model. Um, about 1,000 lines of X query, though there's still a lot of redundancy in there since we uh, copy, copied and pasted some stuff which could be cleaned up. So maybe it could even be reduced to, say, 500 with a bit of work. And uh, there are 25 additional custom API endpoints. <clears throat> so all in all, given the yeah, complexity of the, of the project and that we had to to redo a, a, a complete site which had already been there and running for a decade. I think the, the additional effort um, was actually rather uh, small. So in the following, I will talk a bit more about how things were actually implemented, because I think for 
for you as the audience, this is this is most interesting. Um, so not to look at the, at the site or the, the, the functionality of it, but rather a bit behind the scenes, what's going on there. Um, if you browse through the website, you can see that. Uh, oh, I would just like to switch my screen. Hello. Ah. <coughs> yeah, browsing through the <coughs> through the website, you can see that there are different contexts. So obviously, you can browse through the letters, um, but uh, you can also start from. Uh, the, from people, oh, let's go back. You can browse through people appearing in the edition. Um, you can also browse through places. No. <clears throat> and so on. <clears throat> uh, so you have different, different contexts and those uh, contexts, they are reflected uh, directly in the API. So uh, within the app, if you go to the API browser, you, you can look at this and you basically see the, the different URLs. So first of all, there are the, the different landing pages. So we have one for the letters, one for an individual letter. So individual letters always start with a B and then some number as an ID. Then we have uh, an about section. We have contexts, so people, uh, places, bibliography, and so on. Um, <clears throat> those knowing uh, TI Publisher uh, will also recognize that most of those endpoints actually map to standard TI Publisher functions, named here uh, the, the view API HTML. So there's no custom code behind. It's just a, an additional mapping. In other cases, we do have additional code, like say here, few person, few about, few letter. So, but what happens there is actually that we are just adding uh, adding parameters uh, to <clears throat> to the call. So it's it's rather uh, short functions uh, behind those API calls. Um, so then. We also have uh, APIs for the for the web components. So as always in, in, in TI Publisher, the entire user interface is uh, based on web components. <clears throat> so all those things like uh, the browser for people, for places, uh, the timeline, um, and other things, the letters themselves, um, those are all web components and uh, in addition to, to the endpoints uh, already offered by TI Publisher, they, they have some extra endpoints, like for the timeline. We <clears throat> have uh, slash API slash timeline to retrieve the entire the entire list of, of, of dates to be shown on the on the first start page as as the timeline. Uh, but we also have API timeline for a given uh, letter ID. So this will only give you um, the dates uh, belonging to, to uh, a letter sent within this particular correspondence, so between two people or um, two groups of people. Um, yeah, so if we look uh, at uh, how oh, this is implemented just as an example. So here that's the endpoint for the timeline. Um, you can see that it's rather a limited number number of lines in the code. Uh, it's really just producing a JSON output uh, using information from, from the, the, the TI header um, course desk in, in, in this particular case. So it's a rather limited limited function, and if you want to implement something like this timeline your, your, yourself, uh, you may just want to look into. Uh, so this is modules custom API.xql. That's where all the 
um, API fun the custom API functions uh, reside. So if you're navigating around the app, um, modules custom API.xql is where you find the custom API functions. Um, so if we if we look at a single at a single letter, um, let's browse to one. This one, uh, if you browse a single letter, you, you can see that we tried to um, recreate the original navigation, letter navigation in the edition, which I think was quite sophisticated because it not only allowed to you to um, <clears throat> browse from one letter to the next within the edition, but it also allowed you to access the next letter in the particular correspondence. So in this case, between Josef Zing and uh, Alfred Escher. Um, so you have extra links here, uh, which will lead you to the next, <clears throat> to the next letter um, in this particular correspondence. Um, you also have a lot of links within the text. So yeah, you could uh, trigger um, <clears throat> a search for by, by, by keyword here. Um, you have references to <clears throat> commentaries, so additional uh, inform to get additional information about a certain topic. <clears throat> you have references to to people and so on. Um, so yeah, so one thing which is also different from standard TI publisher is that we address in the URL uh, single letters um, by by their ID, which on the old website always started with a B, while internally somehow um, they they were starting with a K and underscore. Um, but that's not a problem because we can just remap this via via the the custom API. Um, so we saw on the API page that we have this slash prefer slash be something. So this will actually um, access uh, a single letter and remap the, the ID to, to the correct uh, TI document. Um, yeah, we also do use uh, facets to, to um, quickly navigate uh, through the correspondence. So that's in particular visible if you uh, go to the start page. Um, so here we have uh, keywords. Uh, you can uh, browse by correspondence. You have mentioned people, um, places, and so on. And you can use all this to um, limit or to, to drill into the number of, of letters being shown. So if I just reduce this to Gotthard Bahn project, then I immediately go down to 1,795 entries. I can also further select uh, a person and it goes further down and so on. Um, likewise, I can also go through the, through the timeline and as well, it will uh, trigger a facet um, so I can immediately uh, reduce my the, the, the letters shown to the period from uh, March 72 to December 72 and um, I'm down to 19. Um, yeah so facets here do have the advantage that they are very very fast so they they do not uh, produce any additional overhead the query does not have to be repeated the facet is just applied to the previously um, <clears throat> received the uh, result set. So this is, allows for very fast browsing uh, through the edition. Um, yeah, then I already talked about this uh, letter details. If we look at a single letter, um, yeah, we again have, have a timeline, but this time it, it does not show uh, the entire collection, but it, it shows um, letters within this particular correspondence, so between Josef Zing and Alfred Escher in the example. Um, we have uh, links to, to mention people, places, commentaries, and so on. 
Um, and what might be interesting is um, how we implemented this letter by letter navigation, because in fact, if if you really have to recompute this, so what's the next letter in this particular correspondence? If you have to recompute this um, live, so at runtime, then it it uh, costs rather a lot of time because it's it's a complex operation, obviously, because you first need to find all the letters belonging to this particular correspondence, then find um, the position of the current letter in there and from there get to the next one and so on. So this turned out to be quite a showstopper and too slow. So what we did was um, to actually encode all this um, information in the TI and there's uh, one TI header um, element which is made for that and it's called Corisp Desk. And uh, so all that information, so the, the TI was enriched with this additional information about what's the next letter, what's the previous letter, and so on. Um, yeah, so if we go to a letter, uh, yeah, you can see that you, you have this, this timeline again here. And uh, if there are less than a certain number of letters, so they fit into a pop-up, then you can even directly jump to them via this direct link. Um, so what we also have is uh, a print preview, though this is, uh, it's, it's not uh, generating PDF or anything. Um, it's just uh, generating an HTML preview, which uh, has been optimized for, for print. So you can just go on uh, print this page and then you will get <clears throat> a few of the letters suitable for, for a printout. Um, yeah, the diplomatic view in the uh, original version, it already contained this nice, um, this nice facsimile regions uh, um, highlighting. So if I show you this, so if you mouse over a line, it uh, nicely knows uh, where in the in the facsimile this this line line is and it highlights it in the facsimile and also shows the, the single line uh, above, the, above the diplomatic uh, text. So this was already <clears throat> present in the original version and I liked it uh, quite a lot. And it was actually easy to, to re-implement um, <clears throat> with a bit of, of, of JavaScript and uh, web components. Okay. <clears throat> So <clears throat> talking a bit about the uh, new components, uh, we already uh, saw the, the timeline component quite a lot. Um, so this is um, actually a, a, a project which was um, already started for the, for the Carl Barth edition. Um, and uh, so we had the, the basic code already in place <clears throat> and just extended it and integrated it into the TI publisher components. Um, it's quite neat because uh, server side, you don't really need to, to know um, how to best display the, the dates on the timeline because that's computed by the component. So all you have to do actually is um, on the server side to send back um, a JSON object um, listing all the dates and then for each date account uh, telling uh, the component how many um, letters actually um, are categorized under this, this particular date. And then you can add additional information, but you don't need to. So for the direct links, we just uh, generate HTML, which which uh, already produces a preview of the of the title of the the, the letter, um, but uh, this will only be used if if there are less than a certain number, because obviously if you have 100 in this list titles, listing them in this pop up is just not possible. Um, 
yeah, so what the timeline does for you is to automatically compute um, which view would fit best. Yeah, so it dep obviously depends on the on the on the period you're trying to show. Yeah, so if the period stretches from I don't know 15th to 18th century, then um, it would be a bit too large if if you were going if you were about to show uh, single years. Um, so then it would, it would switch to a 10 year uh, display. So every um, so every item in the timeline would correspond uh, to, to a decade. Um, but then if you if you drill down and you zoom in into into the period, then it will switch from 10 years to five years and then to year and then to month and then finally to a single day. Um, so it does this computation automatically and it all also clusters um, entries accordingly. Um, yeah, so I think this is very, very handy. And uh, yeah, I already showed you the, the code, which is behind this timeline. So server side, it's rather uh, straightforward for, for those who are familiar with XQuery. Um, it's really just uh, creating a map uh, <clears throat> with one entry for each date and producing a count, and uh, that's it. Um, we also have undated entries, and they then, instead of a date, just get a question mark. Uh, so we can display those as well. OK, then uh, looking at, at search, um, <clears throat> There, a feature with, which was already present in, in, in the older version was the possibility to search across um, different document types. Uh, so not just the letters, but also um, uh, biographies, uh, commentaries, and so on. So we tried to <clears throat> preserve uh, this feature and, and redid it. Um, the search is also again integrated with with the timeline and facets <coughs> to allow the same kind of of drill down operations which you can do on the on the browsing page so if we uh, search for something like no tunnel building uh, so the version on here running on my local laptop is uh, not a bit slower than what's online because it's a dockerized container. Um, okay, so if we run a search, uh, then you see that it uh, finds hits uh, also in people and in letters um, and in commentaries and so on. And you can then uh, just drill down uh, by selecting, I don't know, a subject. You have the timeline, so you can also go uh, and uh, further reduce the result there, and so on. Um, yeah, another advantage of uh, using uh, TI Publisher here is uh, that um, the other editions, which are currently running on the same uh, server, which is the Sources Online server, um, they also expose um, the same APIs. So what we are able to do is to run a cross edition search um, on the sources online portal. Uh, so this is currently not live yet. It's there, but it's hidden behind uh, a password because we, well, the Azure edition is actually the first edition um, to provide this kind of service and be um, and have having been published. Uh, the other editions are still not officially published. So we did not enable this feature yet, but it's it's there and working. Um, so Azure will rather nicely play together with, with those other editions because it offers this uh, standard API, which we saw at the start of the presentation. Um, yeah, then we have uh, pages to browse through through people. Um, and to browse through uh, places. Again, in the um, original version, um, this was um, structured by by alphabet. And uh, after some attempts, we we uh, decided that this actually was the 
the nicest or the nicer approach and uh, we, we, we stick to it. Um, however, we added a possibility to just uh, do a quick search. So if we go to the people's page, So we can just uh, type something and it will automatically reduce the list. And uh, since now we have less than, than 20 entries, it also removes this alphabetic ordering and just shows all of them at once. If we go back, then it will again uh, start uh, ordering things alphabetically. But uh, if we just look at one, one person, then uh yeah so not for all of them but for many you get a biography and uh, you then have a lot of a lot of cross links so you you get all the mentions of immobility in letters which are quite a lot um and you can jump there you get links to the commentaries uh, to other biographies and finally um you can see which uh, letters um, Emil Welty wrote to Alfred Escher or received from Alfred Escher and so on. So that's the, the overview page here. And obviously this is also linked then from the individual letter. So if you go to a letter, uh, you see that uh, Emil Welty and Alfred Escher here are the correspondents. And uh, you also see other mentioned people like this uh, Oberst Hammer. So you could just click there and it will take you to the entry for, for um, Bernhard Hammer. Um, so, oh, wait, I'm too far. Uh, so yeah, so for this alphabetical browsing, um, I decided to implement a new web component because it appeared to be a functionality which I would like to reuse in other contexts as well. So, and I named the new uh, component PB split list because, in fact, um, it, it's not important that uh, we want an alphabetical um, ordering here. Um, it could be any kind of categorization. Yeah? So, PB split list basically just assumes that there are that um, a set of entries, whatever it is. Um, are somehow um, accessible via categories. And in this case, um, the letters of the alphabet are the, the categories, but it could also be something else. Um, and this component server side, um, it actually just um, expects a very simple JSON structure. So obviously, it expects to get back um, the items to be to be shown for the currently selected category, um, plus a list of, of categories. So, and there you always have like category plus account. Um, so the component knows um, how, how many items it can expect there and the, the rest then works automatically. So, to, to use PB split list, you just need to generate this kind of JSON on the server, and then PB split list will do the rest. Um, this has also been used for, for places. So basically, there you will see um, a similar control uh, based on PB split list showing the different places. Um, however, there are quite a lot of places appearing in the in the in the letters, uh, so I counted 2,200 in the end, um, and it turned out to be a bit uh, critical to to show all those places on the map at the same time. Yet uh, I I really thought I I want to display them all, so I know how places are in relation to each other and things. Um, and we then actually enhanced the, the map component um, to support this kind of uh, clustering, which, which makes that possible. So with, with the clustering enabled, performance of the map is really um, nice. Um, 
Yeah, so previously just loading the map would basically kill your, your browser yeah, because there were just too many um, places. And now you, you can nicely jump to a place and uh, still see other places nearby um, without losing context. <coughs> so likewise, you can get a detailed view for, for, for each place. And again, you have cross-linking to other letters, to uh, commentaries, biographies, and so on. Um, yeah, so um, you see the, the project actually contributed quite a few components um, to TI Publisher and uh, the, the positive uh, aspect of this development model is that uh, we could actually immediately commit um, the, the components and the bug fixes and improvements um, to the corresponding repositories. So all, all that you have seen um, is not specific to, to, to this Azure um, edition, but we tried to um, make everything available immediately um, within TI Publisher or within its sub-repositories. So we have changes, as I said, in TI Publisher components. Uh, so the PP split list, the timeline, um, the enhanced map support, this all already went into TI Publisher components and has been released. So because the release is automatic, yeah, at the moment I commit something, it, <clears throat> it does a release. Um, so you can immediately benefit from those things uh, simply by updating your dependency uh, in your own uh, application. We also made some enhancements uh, to the TI Publisher library, so the to the ODD processing model itself, actually, uh, which might be interesting to others as well, but I think this is a, a topic for, for yet another talk. Yeah, and finally, uh, I would just like to, to provide the links um so the application uh is available online um since uh, a week uh, officially and uh, all the source code is uh, on github so feel free to um go there have a look around and uh, copy and paste what whatever you think you could you could need yeah, so and uh, one time more, a big, fan, a big thanks um, to Staatsarchiv Zürich, to the Azure um, Foundation for uh, funding this. And uh, last but not least, to all the people who did the hard work uh, creating and designing the original Azure edition during the past decade. <laughs>